Now, this next poem was written at the Purdy Country Literary Festival in Ameliasburg in 2009. Um, Al Purdy, even though he made it into the 21st century, never had a computer. He had a manual typewriter, and when he wrote letters to people, they were typed on a manual typewriter on fairly small scraps of paper. Um, what, if you don't get correspondence from Al Purdy, what you don't realize is that he always misspelled the name Ameliasburg. <laughs> He had about three or four different ways of misspelling it. But you never saw him spell it correctly. So he was consistent in misspelling the name, but inconsistent as to what the misspelling was. Anyhow, all those yellow flowers at the Purdy Country Literary Festival 2009. August, and the heat in Ameliasburg will not abate. I am standing on a friend's grave, pouring a Molson X on sparse, sun rampish grass. Slowly, all the yellow flowers are absorbed by heat-baked soil. And I know Big Al is grateful, for he is a sensitive man. As the bottle empties, I recall all the beer we downed in that pub on Lake Ontario's shore the clock ticking towards closing. A driven man during the 80s, his insatiable hunger to write, the poems tumbled out, spilling all over the floor. Poems that would fill the woman on the shore. I glance at the belly-scratching spire of the Aberg Village Church, which has not altered in four decades although its congregation has withered away. And no, all will be remembered. 46 books in 55 years. Not bad for a country lad who consistently misspelled the name of his village. <laughs> and my final poem was also written at a Purdy Country Literary Festival, this time in 2013. And this was actually written on the Lost Highway. According to a TV Ontario documentary, the Lost Highway is Highway 7 between Marmara and Perth. And they have this big documentary about how all the people who live near Highway 7 between Marmara and Perth are a bunch of losers. Uh, which is why it's called The Lost Highway. Now, I discovered that stretch of Highway 7 when I first came to Canada back in 1970. And it's a favorite road of mine. And I've driven back and forth on that part of Highway 7 probably about 150 times or more. And I love it. Well, Nothing is more obscure, not even Sarnia, is more obscure than Malone, Ontario. Malone, Ontario is a few miles north of Highway 7, somewhat east of Marmara, and Malone, Ontario is a crossroads, crossroads and about half a dozen houses. Nonetheless, one of the events at the Purdy Country Literary Festival in 2013 was in Malone. Old Orchard. The water mill's been gone three generations, perhaps longer, but the mora contains its music. Frogs have taken over the old pond. Joe Pieweed lines the river's banks. The reading over the poets disperse, some to the forest, others walk upstream in search of the beaver dam. A few apples ripen on the boughs of an abandoned orchard, despite the late spring, the cool summer. Mahler would have understood such isolation while nurturing his bittersweet Ninth Symphony, a work he would never live to hear, his health failing, 
his wife unfaithful. Mahler finally died, never knowing the great acclaim that was to come. No one will pick these apples. They will remain long into November. If the mora holds the mill's song, truly the silent branches of these enduring trees embody all the grace of the extended adagio that closes his ninth. Thank you. Linder, who has two poems in the Tamarax Anthology, and she's going to be promoting her new book, which was only launched last month in Sarnia. And just a, a little funny story, because we have a little bit of time, to show you about editors. One of Norma's poems in Tamarax which I think is a terrific poem of Norma's, is in a manuscript of her next poetry collection called Cabbages and Kings to come out early next year. And the editor at the publisher kicked that poem out and it was not going to be in Cabbages and Kings. So, if you want that poem, which I think is so great, you have to get Tamarack. Because it's only in print there. Norma Westlinder, the great Canadian novelist. I have uh, three poems that I would like to share first. I first met James when he was at my house for a poetry reading in 1994, I think it was, anyway. A quarter century ago. Yeah, a quarter of a century ago. And we both had mates. And the next time I saw him at the Purdy Festival, we had both lost our mates. So we found each other. And this is called A Beer for Big L. Purdy County Literary Festival 2009. A foolish old man with brain on fire, Al once described himself. Poets are gathering today around Al Purdy's large, book shaped black marble monument, intoning favorite lines culled from his poems. At intervals, James Dio empties three bottles of Molson's over this sunstruck plot beside the mill pond in Ameliasburg. Libations and memory of Al's drinking days at the Quinting, where he once declared himself to be a sensitive man. Twenty engraved word, words carved in the monument convey Al's sentiments. This is where I came to when my body left its body and my spirits stayed in its spirit home, December 30th, 1918, to April 21st, 2000. Come spring, the, near lock, the nearby lilac bush will bloom again. And this one is called Bottle Inspector. In the mid-40s, in my 16th summer, I worked at a beverage plant in Gravenhurst. Perched on a tall black stool, I inspected rows along a long black belt. Coke bottles lit from behind. I dreamed of them each night. One morning, a bottle slipped by an open safety pin unnoticed inside it. It caught the light, I protested. That's how I missed it. Because I attended high school with his golden-haired daughter, the owner didn't fire me. Instead, he had me doing all sorts of odd jobs, like lifting heavy crates of pop from one spot to another. And one day, his wife picked me up to
to scrub her kitchen walls. If I learned nothing else that summer of discontent, I learned the value of an education. 